This is an extended writing question, so structure is important as are links. Read the question really carefully and once you've answered it, check back that you've answered all of it. Remember, comparisons, conclusions, things like that are going to get you the marks here. Okay, so this one, it's another quality of written communication question. Um, two in a row on this specimen paper, but well, let's just get on with it. Six marks, so again, apply your kind of six mark skills from your GCSE. And actually this one is about the transformers. And if you brought out your standard transformer um, explanation from GCSE, alternating current induces changing magnetic field, induces alternating EMF in the secondary coil, you probably actually get three marks, I would suggest. So you can do that, but it's important, well, where are the extra marks to distinguish this from a nice, easy kind of C grade student who's learnt their revision guide um, and a kind of higher grade student than that? How are you going to distinguish that? You're going to have to read through and kind of see the clues that they're giving you, okay? So diagram shows inside electric toothbrush and charger, fine. Charger contains coil wrapped around the iron core, yeah, see that? Coil is plugged into AC, so we know that is AC, fine. A toothbrush also contains a coil that sits around the iron core when the toothbrush is placed on the charger to recharge the battery. So this is the recharge circuit in there of the toothbrush. Okay, so there's a clue in here, which what you might see, explain why is there a diode there? That's a kind of clue. Um, describe how the charger is able to charge the low voltage. I think that's the second clue to where these kind of higher marks are. Okay, so let's just start with our standard explanation of a transformer. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that as a kind of basis for my answer. I, I know I've got some relevant stuff here, but I'm trying to find the rest. Okay, so well, the first thing I will want to do is talk about the, um, the stuff I know that's above that. Well, this induction of this changing PD, okay, is due to Faraday's law. Okay, so induced EMF is due to Faraday's law. Now, this is defining why it must be a changing magnetic field to induce current. If it was just a DC circuit here, you would get a mag field, but it would only change once, and then you wouldn't get any induced EMF. Okay, so it must be due, due to Faraday's law. Basically, now you've said that, well, you can actually write that down. Yep, I'll put a little D there as well. EMF is minus d n phi over dt. So the EMF is proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage. Okay. Now, the two clues that I was talking about, what must occur so that we get a lower voltage out? This means there must be fewer turns, brackets N, on the secondary coil, or the charging coil, so that a lower voltage is produced. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Everything else is the same. The magnetic field is the same. The rate is the same. Rate is the same. So N must change. And lastly, how does it actually charge? Because if you can imagine this battery is getting positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, well, it's never going to be an, a net flow of charge. The um, charge is going to be put in, then taken out, put in, then taken out, put in, then taken out. So why, how do we do that? We use a diode. So a diode ensures that 
there is a net flow. charge into the battery and where I'm going to write this I'll just put an asterisk sorry. and just to cover myself because it's a quark a quality written communication I'm going to go I'm going to write um, into the battery otherwise the battery would discharge and would charge and discharge every cycle. Okay, I hope that helps with that one. Pretty standard question, just with a few little clues as to where the extra marks are. Okay, so now we're talking a bit more detail about the charging circuit. Um, this one simply shows the resistance of the motor R is about 50 ohms. Here, you're just basically using Ohm's law. So R is V over I. Which, R, which V and which I are you going to use? It's going to be the terminal PD. Just ensure that you use your uh, prefixes there. That's where the time sent to the minus three is. Forty-seven point four ohms, which is approximately fifty ohms. Okay, this is a nice one because you can check it, but gosh, it's only one mark. So get that down, get the mark in the bag. The power transferred from the battery in the motor depends on the ratio R over R, shown in the the graph below. So this point here is the maximum power um, transferred to that. I hope you remember what. R is, is the internal resistance and R is the load resistance. We know the load resistance is about 50 ohms, okay? Um, so we did that from the last one, we just calculated that. That's why they give you a show that, so you can carry on with this one here. I've got a video explaining all about the max power theorem. You do not need to do the, um, the uh, you do not need to do the differentiation in this question, okay? But what you do need to be able to do is to figure out what the internal resistance of that cell is. And it relies on the equation which defines an EMF. An EMF is the theoretical kind of maximum voltage that a cell can give you. EMF is the load potential difference plus the current times the internal resistance. So it is that. I'll just do they give you this? Now it would appear they don't actually give you that equation. So you're going to need to remember that definition. It's an expanded version of Ohm's law. If V is IR, let's do it here. And you know the total resistance is actually the load and the internal then this becomes the EMF and you can expand it to that form there where this is the terminal PD and that's the internal resistance there. So essentially you just need to figure that out. Let's look back at the section of the question. The EMF was 6 volts. The terminal PD was 2.7. The current was 57 milliamps and little r is what we're going to find out first because we can see that max power is at a ratio r over little r 1 so essentially when they're equal which that is the max power theorem max power is transferred when the resistance load resistance and internal resistance are the same so rearrange for this um, gives me Three point three is fifty seven times ten to the minus three R. So R is three point three divided by fifty seven ten to the minus three. Boom, bang. Fifty seven 
0.9 ohms is our internal resistance. So does R over little r equal one? No, R over little r equals, I can use the show that value or I can be more accurate and use my own value, 47.4 over 57.9. The ratio is 0.82. So is maximum power transferred? Does R over little r equal one? Well, no, it equals 0.82. So R over little, sorry, R over little r does not equal one, therefore maximum power is not transferred and it's not quite at the maximum power. It's close, but not quite. Okay, I hope that makes sense. The three marks in that are using this equation to figure that out, using that to work out the ratio, and then saying that they're not equal, therefore max power is not transferred. So I hope that was really useful to you. Exam questions are a great way to practice for exams, but don't just do exam questions. There's, if you struggle with that exam question, then you probably need to revisit the theory for that topic. So do that before you have a go at some other ones. If I've made any mistakes, then correct them down below. And if you've got any more questions, then down below as well. Maybe you guys can help each other out. And there should be some um, playlists around here and a subscribe button if you like that and you want to see some more as I'm going to bring it out. All right, thanks a lot for watching.